That means the gas generator is now turning under the stutter generator power, which is our first thing to watch out for. In icing conditions, it is possible for either the gas generator or, more likely, the power turbine to be iced over and not free to turn. If that would be the case and we continued with the engine start, we would melt the engine's hot section, which, 10 times out of 10, leads to a bad day. After we check the initial rotation, we keep monitoring the gas generator RPM gauge and we are looking for 20%. At that time, we will open the fuel flow to the engine by moving the engine's cutoff valve to the open position. And note the time, as it should take no more than 60 seconds for the engine to reach idle speed. We then immediately monitor the EGT gauge to identify the time at which combustion inside the engine starts, which should be right away. This event is commonly referred to as light off. The next thing to watch out for is rotor movement, which should happen prior to the gas generator reaching 25% RPM. From now on, we monitor the gas generator RPM looking for freezes or the needle being stuck at a certain RPM. Before the gas generator RPM reaches 60%, we start to monitor the start valve light on the engine startup control panel. The light should go off, signifying start valve disconnection before 65% gas generator RPM. A quick glance at the engine oil pressure and hydraulic system pressures to ensure they are rising is a good idea. Once the engine has reached idle speed, it should be at around 70% gas generator RPM. That will signify the end of this engine's start, and we can then start our other engine. Wow, now that's a lot of things to look for during the start. So, let's recap the order in which they will happen. Gas generator RPM jump to indicate rotation. At 20% gas generator RPM, open fuel cutoff. Check for light off. Check for rotor motion. Prior to 65% gas generator RPM, check start valve light goes off. Check rise in engine oil and hydraulic pressure. Check engine idle, should be approximately 70% gas generator RPM, is reached within 60 seconds. All right, with all that in mind, let's give this a try. Hit the start button, and there goes the gas generator. We have rotation, so let's get ready with the fuel cutoff. 20%, open the fuel cutoff, and check for light off. There it is. Let's look outside, and yep, there goes our rotor, so back inside for a smooth RPM rise. We are now getting close to 65% gas generator RPM, so let's monitor the start valve light. There it is, it went off at around 60% gas generator RPM, that's nominal. So let's look at our engine oil pressure. That's not nominal yet, but it has risen from zero to about two kilograms per centimeter squared, and that's good. And our hydraulic pressure. There it is, we have pressure in both our main and standby systems, as well as the accumulators. One last thing to check and make sure our idle speed is at about 70% gas generator RPM. There we are. And that engine start is done. It happens pretty quickly, but if you know what to look for and where, it should be straightforward. Let's repeat for the right engine, with the exception that we don't need to check for rotor motion since they are already turning. So, let's go to the wall panel and open the right-hand engine fuel shutoff and cap it and enable the right hand EEG and cap it. Let's go over to the engine control panel and move the engine selector switch to the engine right hand and press the start button. Let's look at the gas generator. Gas generator RPM indicates the engine is spooling nicely so let's feed it some fuel at 20%. Check for light off. We have a little time, so let's check the engine oil pressure. It's rising. Good. Checking the RPM again. We're 
We're coming up on 65% gas generator RPM, so let's monitor the start valve light. The start valve has closed, as it should, and the engine is now idling at 70% gas generator RPM. Perfect. We have two good engine starts and can now start configuring her for flight. First of all, we don't need the APU anymore, so we kill it by pressing the stop APU button on the engine control panel. You can hear the APU spooling down and see the EGT dropping fast on the APU control panel, as well as the APU on light extinguish. The APU valve open light reminds us that we need to turn that off. So let's go to the wall panel and do that and cap it. So far we have been feeding the electrical buses of the helicopter from the batteries, but now that both engines are online we can change that source from batteries to the generators. They are on the wall panel and are identified as AC system generators left hand and right hand. Just moving the switches won't actually connect them to the main buses just yet since the engine throttles have to be set higher than idle where they are right now for the generators to produce enough electricity to close the respective relays. But this gets them ready so that as soon as that happens they will come online. So, left and right, there we go. Now it's time to check those engines and make sure that they are healthy and ready to go to battle. The first system to be checked is the NAI system, although we can only perform this check when the outside air temperature is less than 5 degrees Celsius. Since today's temperature is zero degree, we can go ahead and do that. Let's get the engine throttle levers to the auto position. These levers are not clickable in the cockpit and are located back here. So we do it by hitting page up twice. The first press takes us from idle to medium and the second from medium to auto. Watch a ground. You will hear the engines Watch and the rotor spooling up as well as the ECRAN warning twice and the rotor RPM should land at around 90% which can be checked up here. On the overhead panel set the engine anti-ice switch to the up position which is the anti-ice position. The first indication that the anti-ice system is functioning are the two lights on the right overhead warning light panel. Left hand engine anti-ice, right hand engine anti-ice. The second thing to look for is an increase of up to 60 degrees Celsius in each engine's EGT as well as up to 2% increase in the gas generator RPM. The gas generator RPM change might be very hard to notice, so try and go by the EGT. If the EGT changes noticeably, we know the system is working as it should. So I'm going to return this to off, allow the EGT to come back down and stabilize. You can see it right there. And it looks like it's going to stabilize at around 700 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to go ahead and turn engine ATI on once again. And notice that my EGT is rising. Okay, that's a good test. Let's move the switch back into its neutral position. For the dust protection system test, we will move the same switch, but this time to the down position. Check that left-hand engine dust protection and right-hand engine dust protection lights come on on the right overhead warning light panel and monitor the EGT and gas generator RPM once again. In this check, we look for a maximum of 30 degrees Celsius of increase to each engine's EGT as well as 0.5% increase in gas generator RPM. Once again, the EGT will be the more noticeable indication that the system is in operation. So, let's move the switch to the dust position. Both lights come on and our EGT is rising slightly from where it was before. Okay, that means both systems are working. Let's return to the overhead panel and turn it off. So now we know our engines will be protected should we encounter icing conditions. But without our rotors generating lift, we won't get far. So next in line is the rotor NEI system test. We will find the rotor NEI system switch right next to the engine ice switch. So let's flip it up to the on position and look for the rotor NEI screen light on the right overhead warning lights panel. For this system, that's all we need to do. Okay, our NEI checks are done. Let's turn it off.